two of the more common diseases that I see in my clinics are retinal detachment and diabetic retinopathy. Retinal detachment is a uh, fortunately very rare condition, um, but when it does affect someone, it can be very visually devastating. Whereas diabetic retinopathy is actually very common among diabetic patients with a third to half of patients with diabetes ultimately developing some sort of diabetic retinopathy. So retinal detachment can be treated in a few different ways and the choice of the technique really depends on the anatomy of the retinal detachment. Um, there are different techniques called, some called vitrectomy, some called scleral buckle, some called pneumatic retinopexy, and sometimes you use one or the other or a combination of them to treat the detachment. And it all really depends on the patient and the patient's eye and where the retinal detachment is. So diabetic retinopathy is treated in a number of different ways depending on how severe and how advanced and, and how much it's affecting a patient's vision. So in the early stages, we really just watch these patients, but also try to help them manage their blood sugar because we know that the severity of uh, blood sugar abnormalities affects how fast and how bad the diabetic retinopathy gets. Once a patient has developed some damage from diabetic retinopathy, we use different treatments such as injections and lasers to either stop the progression of the disease and in many cases we can actually improve the process, sort of roll back the damage and improve people's vision. A macular hole is a defect in the center of the macula. The macula is the center of your retina, which is the light sensing organ in your eye and the macula is the part of your retina that serves your central vision for reading and recognizing faces and recognizing people. A macular hole develops from an abnormal separation of tissues in the eye and that actually causes a, a, a loss of vision right in the very center of what you're looking at. Typically, if a macular hole needs treatment, and they, they don't always all need treatment, but if a macular hole needs treatment, it's usually treated with a vitrectomy and a gas bubble placement. And a vitrectomy is a surgery where we remove what's called the vitreous gel out of the eye and then replace it, in this case, with a gas bubble that goes away after a few weeks. The gas bubble, in combination with the patient holding their, he holding their head in a certain position, allows the retina to grow back together in the place where the hole had previously been. A retinal vein occlusion is the result of a blockage in one of the veins in the retina, in the eye. And the retina is the light sensing organ in the back of your eye that helps you see. So if one of the veins in the retina becomes blocked, then blood can't flow back out of the eye and it tends to back up and puddle, for lack of a better word, inside the eye. And that puddling uh, can damage the eye and also distort your vision by throwing off the very careful positioning of the tissues inside the eye. So a retinal vein occlusion is treated most commonly with uh, injections into the eye. Um, there are a few different types of medications that we use, but they are, for the most part, very successful in stabilizing and sometimes improving vision. Now, a lot of that does depend on how quickly the retinal vein occlusion is treated. And, but even, even in that, there's a, a careful balance because a lot of times retinal vein occlusions will just get better on their own. So you don't necessarily want to treat something that's going to get better on its own, but if it's not going to get better on its own, you want to treat it before it causes permanent damage. Yeah.